Okay. So the topic I want to talk about is um, is a feature of search that goes a bit beyond the uh, just the pages and beyond the um, uh, the idea of information uh, metadata, if you will, but also to um, beyond data altogether. And um, I just as a ca uh, casual comment, it's my note. This is someone I'm I'm in a battle with. Um, this is uh, the reason is uh, Goldberg. He's Bill Goldberg, and uh, he comes up first when you search for Goldberg, and uh, he's he's winning. So um, I'm working on it. <laughs> um, and I, I have a little. I just this is just very uh, sort of a, a, a background. I've done some work in uh, collaborative filtering, and we've been very interested. We have a, a site that does collaborative filtering for jokes, uh, recommending jokes to individuals. And we have a, a method. And if, if there's time, I'll be happy to talk a little more about this. But what I want to talk about is the is the real world, the physical world, and it's increasingly an important subject because there's so much interest now in the environment and um, global warming, et cetera. Um, one of the, the people who have been studying this for a long time, of course, are the biologists, the natural scientists. And they go out and they look at nature and they try and study trends and, 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 and um, detailed behavior. And the problem is when they go out there, they have to, they're searching for some kind of phenomena in the physical world and it's very difficult. Uh, they have to um, sit out in long, da often dangerous spots and they have to wait for something to happen. And of course their own presence interferes with the very thing they're trying to observe. So, um, so I, I, I think that an interesting direction is to, is to apply technology, of course, as an as a, uh, as engineer. And I think that what we can do is we can apply techniques that involve not just single observations, but multiple kinds of observers. And, um, so the and there's a number of people who are thinking along similar lines, and you've heard some of the uh, some of these efforts that are out here, in particular uh, Neon, Genie, Neptune, that are interested in looking at um, at, at, at an environmental uh, phenomena. And of course, the other aspect of this is robots. I think that I'm not I'm not talking about web, web crawling robots. I'm talking about um, the real kind, or sorry, sort of real. Um, and we've had several people from Microsoft here, and Bill Gates came out last um, a few months ago and basically said that robots are where personal computers were in 1975, which is a very interesting thing for him to say. Uh, basically that it's still very, um, it's still much in the hobbyist stage, but it's poised. In other words, that he sees that there's potential now for some things to rapidly change, and people don't know exactly what they're going to be used for, but there seems to be a similar kind of opportunity. So what we're interested in is the idea of applying all kinds of mechanisms, robotic mechanisms, sensing mechanisms, and the web into investigating and searching for phenomena in the physical world. So we have an NSF um, project, and this is joint with Des Song, who's at Texas A&M, to investigate, to look at um, animals in particular in nature. And we've been looking in, at, at something called the, um, at this particular case study of the ivory bill woodpecker. And um, how many of you know about this? Situation. Okay, it's a fascinating story, and I won't have time to go into it. But it's it's basically considered the holy grail of bird watching, um, and I mean that literally. I mean there is people have dream about this bird and talk about it all the time, and it's a big search because the bird hasn't been definitively sighted since 1944, and it's kind of like a lot of these other searches, you know, the black orchid, the, the Loch Ness monster. Um, and a little bit like the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. In other words, there's something out there, but it's very rare and very hard to find. And, <clears throat> of course, sometimes these things do yield results. So last year we, we saw that the, the giant squid of, of, sort of, uh, of lore was actually spotted by a group of Japanese uh, researchers. Um, now, birds are particularly interesting because there's a huge population of people interested in them, and they're out there searching all the time. And this particular individual spotted this bird, the ivory bill woodpecker, about, two, about three years ago, and it launched a huge, uh, massive search. And <clears throat> it resulted in a paper in Science Magazine claiming that there were, there, they had sufficient evidence by a Cornell team. The problem is their evidence, and I won't have time to show you all this, but their evidence is, is, is very marginal. It's a few pixels of a video that's been analyzed over and over again. And this particular guy has said, no, this is not acceptable. And he's a huge um, um, uh, critic of the, of the group. So we approached them with this NSF grant and, and said, can we help you? We're, we're, we're interested in building robotic systems. So to make a long story short, we went down there and we, we're working now with the team. We set up this um, robotic system that is out there to do search. And the idea is that there's two high-resolution uh, video cameras that are online 12 hours a day, searching through, watching the sky. And they're recording data. We don't have a network connection there yet. And the pro so the idea is that they're recording, and we're taking in data, and we're on the fly, we're processing it to throw away anything that doesn't contain a potential bird. So we have to do image processing on the fly and look for we have to do statistical background subtraction and then um, record anything that looks like it might be a bird. So the interesting thing is that we have found some birds. Um, this, is, um, this is one of the earliest pictures we got. I was very excited because I thought we've, we've, we've seen a pterodactyl. But um, 
Yeah. <laughs> Um, this, is a, this is a blue heron. Now, the, 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 the researchers say that if this were, if we did have a moment of seeing the ivory bill, this would be definitive. And here's another example. This, is, um, this was just one morning, early in the morning. Um, we caught a, a red-tailed hawk. And if you look at this again, it's a very high resolution. We just got uh, the light just right. And they said this would be the million-dollar photograph they've been waiting for. So um, we're, wait, we're waiting and watching. And, and we're recording the data. And the next thing we're doing is, is setting up a, a network over the summer. In the meantime, one thing we're also interested in is this idea of sociable uh, media that, um, that, that, that Marty and Andrew and Matt and Andre have talked about today. And uh, we're very interested in, in this. So we have a test case where we've set up a, a, a camera on a website in a location that's closer in. Um, we're not going to see the ivory bill here, but this is a uh, part of San Francisco. And we have Craig from Craigslist who have, who's agreed to put this on his house. So we have a, a site. And people can go in and manipulate a shared camera. And uh, I can talk more about that. But it's a robotic camera where you can pan, tilt, and zoom in. And we're getting, people are taking pictures of birds. Now, the whole issue of incentive has been talked about a lot here. And the, the, our idea is to turn this into a game. So we call it a massively multiplayer online game. And you don't get points by killing the birds. You get points by taking pictures of birds and then classifying them. So when you, you snap a picture and then you classify it, and we use something like um, Von Ahn's idea of um, uh, uh, where there's, you have to have three uh, consistent um, classifications in order for it to count. And we're finding it's an amazing thing. So this thing was launched about a week ago, 10 days ago, and um, it already has 2,600 um, active members. And this is an example of, what, uh, of a photo that's been taken. The odds of catching a, a, a hummingbird in that space is very rare. But it's a kind, we now have 26 pictures of hummingbirds on there. Um, OK, so just to, in terms of challenges and prospects, what I'm very excited about is this idea of community or social tagging um, and information. I think that one thing we, we could emphasize more is games and competition. So as Von Ahn has put very co effectively human computation, we have a lot of people out there playing solitaire. If we can harness them into doing something else, like um, tagging, uh, tagging images or, or actually watching for something interesting going on in nature, it could be very effective. And I think that at the same time, there's a learning that goes on. At least for me, when I, I, don't know, I know very little about birds, but at, in the course of playing this, I'm starting to learn a little bit about what a, a blue jay looks like. Okay, so that's all I want to say, and I want to um, now uh, open things up to, uh, to questions for the panel. Thank you.